Hello! We're going to take a look at the part two of that exercise we were just dealing with with sniffers. But in this part, we're going to focus on an activity that you may find useful for your network and network security administrators. This is just a periodic task you'd like them to perform. It's not one that you as a manager need to do for yourself, but we want to show you what it looks like. It's a pretty fundamental uh, idea. It's not a difficult concept at all, but this way, hopefully you'll be able to explain it or perhaps even you could show your administrators this very video so that they could better understand exactly what it is you're recommending. To get started, I'm simply going to open up the same packet capture that we were working with in the last part of the lab. Now, what we're trying to do is satisfy one of the requirements in the critical controls that your administrators must know their network. They also have to know their systems, how they're configured, how they're changing. But if you don't know what's on your network, if you don't know what your systems are like, if you don't know how they're configured, it's extremely difficult to detect whether or not there are malicious activities occurring. So let's take a look at one of the ways that your administrators can know their network and iteratively perform this activity every few months or maybe at least once or twice a year. It is very simple. And I'm going to do this in a more advanced way just because it's not an activity you as a uh, manager need to perform. So I know a little bit about the Wireshark sniffer. I know how to use it well, like an administrator might. What we're doing is just looking at some of the data on a network. And I'm using the sample packet capture so that if you chose to, you could reproduce exactly what I'm doing. But in the real world, your administrators would want to run this as a live packet capture on their live network. All I'm going to do is look at the data and ask for the administrators to identify whether or not the traffic is expected or not. Can they identify it? For instance, if I look at this line right here, I can see it's traffic going to port 80, and it appears to be coming from an internal private address going to an external address. So I would simply ask the administrators, or they would ask themselves, do we expect to find web traffic on our network? Well, the answer is probably yes. And are you allowing people to talk to the internet on the outside with web traffic? Yes, we are. If they can say yes to that, all we're going to do is add a filter in here to say, don't show me that anymore. So I'll say not tcp.port equal equal 80. When I press enter, all of that data will disappear. And now we just iterate. We do it again. I see the next line. I have traffic going to port 443. Do we allow people to have SSL communications to other sites? We do. So I will add and not tcp.port equal to 443. And it disappears. The next one that we have. I have some data here. Uh, it doesn't look real familiar. It's calling it Synergy. Maybe I don't know what that is. Maybe none of the administrators can identify it. So immediately, that should become an action item. If an administrator, a network engineer, a security engineer sees something on the network that he cannot identify and he doesn't know what it's for, he should not be satisfied to leave that matter rest. Instead, he should immediately want to go and find out what that is and why it's here and if it belongs. For now, we'll ignore this synergy traffic because the administrators couldn't identify it. It seems to be that this traffic is on port 24800, and this packet right here is just more of that. It's just going in the other direction, or it doesn't have any payload in it, perhaps. Now, we've assigned an action item, so for now, I will add that in as something to ignore and not tcp.port equal to 24800, and so on. At this point, we see some additional data, things that we're going to spend some time talking about on day two with regard to how networks function. We have a protocol called ARP. The administrators look at that and say, yes, absolutely, that is just how networks function, and not ARP. And now we're, now we're getting into more interesting things. Well, actually, I see one more that we can immediately eliminate. I see that there is a lot of DNS traffic. And of course, 
We need DNS for everything to work, so I will add and not udp.port equal to 53. All right, so now we're getting down into more interesting stuff. We may begin to find things really quickly that the administrators are surprised to see. The synergy is one part of that, just an unknown protocol. But now we begin to see that why we have a lot of a lot of IP version 6 on our network. Now we'll talk about IP version 6 in class. It is very common to find this on your network, but your administrators may be very concerned because they haven't consciously deployed it. Now that could turn out to be a big deal. And again, we'll talk about some of the risks there in class. But they don't even know to begin looking until they know what's on their network. Other things that we can see here that are interesting, I see this DEC traffic. Apparently it is the local area VAX cluster traffic. In fact, our organization does have a legacy VAX cluster, so that's not unexpected for me. But I can assure you that having done this exercise with organizations, if your network has been around for more than five to 10 years, it is not unusual at all to find legacy network protocols running on your network today. And your administrators upon seeing this will look at each other and say, I thought those were all gone. So do you know your network? Do you know your systems? There are other things that can show up in here. I'm just going to scroll down a bit and uh, see if I can find one. I think it's actually well toward the bottom. Uh, we can see the telnet traffic we saw earlier. There's more ICMP version 6. I'm just going to scroll all the way to the bottom. Let's see what we have here. I've got more of the IP version 6. I've got some, ah, here's what I was looking for. I've also got this spanning tree packets. Now, spanning tree is a protocol that's used to manage switches. And by manage, I'm not talking about configuring them. What I'm really talking about is switches might be configured to use this protocol to decide which path a packet should take through the bridging infrastructure. We're going to discuss some of the details of that on day two, but for now we'll just say that an administrator seeing that should immediately say, if this is a user-facing port, I should not be seeing that because it makes me vulnerable to attack. Now, let's back away because right now we're way down in the weeds. The point of what we're doing is that the administrator can progressively work together with other administrators Look at what they see on the screen. If they can identify it, if they know that they're supposed to have it, they exclude it from the view. If they don't know what it is or know it doesn't belong, someone must go and find out what it is or make it go away. When they're all done with this, it is actually possible to save this filter so that you can use it again in the future. In this way, they don't have to recreate that filter every single time they start. Although honestly, it's not a difficult thing to do and it is probably a good practice to build it from scratch because that way you're not blinding yourself, ignoring things that you probably should not be ignoring. Overall though, I hope you can see what the purpose of this exercise is and it about knowing your network and doing it in a very practical way. Rather than just saying, yes, we know what's there, actually looking. This becomes something that's measurable because now I can tell, we can see visibly whether or not we've identified everything on our network. One last thing before we close this out, there is an alternative way to do some of this. I'm going to close up this view and use the statistics menu to view the protocol hierarchy. Now, personally, I would prefer to work through eliminating things with the filter because then we really do know our network well. But it is possible to overlook things that way too. By looking at it with the protocol hierarchy, I can see exactly what kind of data is going across the network. For instance here, I can see that there is a TiVo discovery protocol running. That's interesting. Your administrators, I would hope, would see that and say, where is there a TiVo plugged into our network and why is that here? What does that have to do with business? It allows you to, at a high level, immediately see what's here without having to sift through hundreds, thousands, or millions of packets. We also see things like the telnet traffic that we saw earlier, 
we can see that synergy traffic that we have not yet identified, in addition to being able to find the other kinds of data that are happening. One last thing is that it is also possible to right click here uh, and apply this as a filter directly from this view. So if there's an unusual protocol, the administrators can choose to apply it as a filter and then look more closely at it and see if they can determine what's actually happening. So with this exercise, we now have a way that we can determine what's on our network and decide whether or not it belongs. That's the end of the sniffers portion. Again, if you'd like to reproduce these, we have all of the details. And if you do need some assistance or have questions, feel free to reach out.